Are we ready? We are live. Okay. I just want to welcome you all to the budget workshop for Chatham Area Transit being held today, March 31st. And I'm very grateful that everyone is in attendance. So, um, uh, Faye, I guess we'll turn it over to you, Ms. Damaso. Absolutely. Well, thank you all so much for uh, your time and attention to this very important effort today. And uh, I want to also um, thank um, Stephanie Cutter, our CFO, for the tremendous amount of work that she and her staff have put, in, put into the preparations for this. Um, and we are, are glad to uh, get a chance to discuss it with you and seek your input as we um, are entering into the preparation of our FY23 budget. Next slide. So we, we want to, while we're talking about FY23, one of the things that we're really starting to do is to even look beyond FY23. It's really important that we get that budget year set, but, and we begin our performance measurement programming, um, but where we're really going to be able to fully implement that is, is as an FY24 budget process goal. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit today about the development of a performance uh, measurement program that's based upon TCRP Report 88. That is the, uh, the Transit Cooperative Research Program. Hi, and it is a, 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 a sort of the standard of performance measurement in transit systems. Across Join the, the meeting. Country. Next slide. So it's an eight step process um, and what you, we will begin again this year to start to develop for full implementation um, in FY24 is this, this eight step process where we will define what our goals and objectives are, uh, generate management support, working with you for how we're moving forward. And you can see the diagram on the side, it's sort of the cogs of all these things and how they fit together working with our users, stakeholders, and what the constraints are in that process, uh, our select performance measures and develop consensus, test and implement the program, monitor and report performance, and integrate the results into our agency decision-making and review and update the program after it has been established. And the reason this is in, in especially important, if we go to the next slide, this comprehensive eight-step process, is we've got several key performance integration needs um, that this will serve. One is the master transit plan uh, that we are working to uh, secure the funding for so that we can move forward with um, our big picture, very high system level vision of what we wanna accomplish. It's also key in the annual budget development process and it's further key in human resource administration because these performance measures that we develop for the organization also must be reflected in position descriptions and performance reviews, because that's where we build from the, the, the top of what it is we want to accomplish. It's our people who make it happen. And so we've got to be sure that, that these performance integration needs are further reflected in that, uh, that human resources administration process. And with that, next slide, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, our CFO, Stephanie Cutter, to walk through the rest of the, the budget presentation. Thank you, uh, Mrs. DeMassimo. Um, on the screen, uh, you have the 23 budget calendar, which was formally adopted by the board of directors earlier in the year. Next slide, please. Um, before you, uh, FY23 operating budget, we've set some goals. Uh, we hope to have a minimum of $2 million to go towards the cash reserves at FY22 year end. Uh, the current operating reserve balance as of today is $4,033,368. We are in the heart of the FY23 uh, budget development. And today is so meaningful to that process because we get to receive feedback from the board uh, as to uh, any comments, any uh, edits to where we are today and any additional items that they would like 
uh, for consideration as we move forward uh, towards the final preparation of the budget. Um, the budget submissions from the departments uh, were due on Monday, March 28th. Uh, we are actually moving into the review process. Uh, we will be coming around the table with the department managers to, of course, discuss submissions. Join the meeting. In preparation uh, to meet with the CEO prior to bringing forward uh, updates and drafts to the board. Uh, we expect the uh, uh, proposed draft to be completed by April 29th. Um, we will continue to work on incorporating strategic initiatives that the board has talked about um, for the past year. Um, and we look forward to presenting a balanced budget with, of course, revenues uh, equaling expenditures. Next slide, please. Uh, Dr. O'Halloran had asked um, as a part of the workshop process that we take a look from a five-year perspective. And we've done this from a revenue um, side of things and you will follow will be the expenditure side. Uh, this chart shows uh, by uh, work program, uh, the revenue side of Chatham Area Transit. And want to particularly, particularly call your attention to um, the grant column. As you can see, 2018, 2019, it was pretty much standard for grant receipts for Chatham Area Transit at $3.5 million. In 2020, there was a huge boost because of all of the um, uh, pandemic assistance that the organization received that totaled 11.7. Uh, it went down in 21, and that's simply because of the timing when the money came in back up in 22, the current fiscal year of 8.7 million and what we have appropriated for FY23 is $4.8 million, a significant drop, almost $4 million in, in revenue. Um, this and that will pose a significant challenge for the balancing of the FY23 uh, budget. Um, that's the primary uh, hit on the revenue side for FY23. As the uh, graph below, it just depicts uh, the ups and down by revenue category. Um, and the yellow represents um, the numbers uh, for grant revenues received from 2018 uh, and projected for fiscal year 2023. Next slide, please. The expenditure comparison, um, it's outlined in the chart and the graph shows that for uh, paratransit and marine, it's been um, pretty constant, um, but fixed route, it's steadily climbing. And within the FY23 budget, we're gonna focus on, on what's driving that climb and, and how we can um, better uh, manage um, our fixed route services. Staff is working very diligently uh, this year with the FY23 budget, um, looking at these, these cost drivers. Um, we know that it's, fuel is a part of it and there are other uh, items, but we wanna make sure that we are being good fiscal stewards. So we're gonna spend a lot of time with the, on the uh, fixed route side to really uh, look into see how we can be better at what we do in a more efficient manner. Ms. Cutter, I would like to just interject one comment there as well, since you pointed that out is, um, uh, later in the presentation, if you have a question about it, we can also point out that part of our uh, upcoming 
and ongoing reorganization moves is aimed at exactly um, looking at how we manage fixed route and paratransit uniquely um, and giving fixed route a, a different, a little bit different management approach to the very ends that Ms. Cutter just described. Thank you. I have a quick question. Um, and just looking at these numbers for paratransit in 20 and 21, I was under the impression that paratransit was not being used as much. And so I was just wondering why the costs continued to go up. I know in 2021, it went down slightly from the year before, mm -hmm. but it was my understanding that um, paratransit use was way down. Now remember, the, the, this is the um, this is a budget comparison, not actual. Okay. okay. This 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 is budget. Yes. All right. So, do we have the actual? Is that coming up next? Well, we 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 are doing uh, the the budget comparisons on your monthly reports that you get. It actually shows you what the actual is. And on those reports um, and graphs, you see this gap, um, actual in comparison to budget. And that's um, exactly what you're speaking of, Director Stone, because of the staffing shortages and our spending right. uh, less, that's what that gap reflects on those reports. Okay, but I mean, it, it would have been good and not that this isn't good, but I, I I understand what you're what you're predicting, but what I want to know is what was actually spent. Okay, we can um, in our April meeting we'll spend mm -hmm. quite a bit of time on the actual versus the budget to make sure okay. the board um, understands where we are year to date in each expenditure category. I appreciate that. I just like to know you know where we are in in comparison to where we thought we might be. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Next slide. The computer is obviously freezing. Please bear with us. The assumptions um, that, that we are using in, in this process, um, the millage rate remains flat. Um, the uh, growth in the tax digest, and this is what is being reflected this year, so we, we tend to leave it at that. Uh, service level hours, a little over 195,000. Um, a combination uh, wage um, increase up to uh, 5%. And this will be broken down by cost of living. Uh, and then taking a look at merit as well. Uh, and the inf inflation factors um, are outlined below, want to call special attention to fuel. Um, we are seeing uh, a 46% increase there uh, for diesel uh, and for gasoline. We anticipate a minimum of a 5% um, uh, increase in our assurance, uh, both property and fleet in addition to uh, costs associated with health care. I would imagine, and this is a guess, that the digest is going to come in stronger than 4% yeah. based on real sales. Yes. Um, I had a little conversation um, uh, with the county, and um, the numbers are not in yet. So... And as we, as a part of the balancing strategy, as we get more information regarding the, the, the tax digest, where gasoline prices are going, we're gonna be refining our projections um, as a part of the balancing process. Right. Thank you, Director Stone, for that. 
budgeting for outcomes. Um, not only are we looking at FY23, as the CEO said, uh, we are looking beyond 24 because we know that beyond 24, 23, um, we're gonna have some major challenges. So we have to start preparing for it now. So we, we're, we're getting a head start and the FY23 budget is the beginning of that. Um, we're concerned about the board areas of interest in addressing uh, these areas of interest uh, within uh, our budgeting practices, uh, training and development, the policy initiatives that the board uh, has adopted, um, listening to the board as to what they expect in terms of transit program expansion. And also, um, we hear you when you talk about uh, transit amenities, um, striving to, be, to do better, um, acknowledging that we are working with less. Efficiencies is, is going to be critical to future movement. Um, we talked briefly about um, our revenue challenges. Uh, we know passenger fare revenue is down. Looking forward to that increasing and FY23 and beyond, we know that agency revenue is down because agencies are recovering just as we are. So those numbers, we look forward to uh, providing uh, transit services to uh, aid community agencies. Uh, we know that there's a significant reduction in grant operating revenue. And we realize that we're gonna have to start uh, looking for new sources of operating revenue. Our operating challenges and, and this is uh, nationwide when it comes to uh, recruitment and retention. Um, the increased need for public uh, transportation is quite visible and we have to address those needs. And then of course, the impact of inflation and price increases. On the capital side, we have grant funds um, that have already been approved and executed for us to use to support uh, the following uh, projects, uh, CAT Center renovation, security camera upgrades, uh, paratransit uh, bus procurement, uh, ITC renovation, uh, ferry boat procurement, the ferry maintenance facility, and the uh, West River Street dock. We recognize when these grants were awarded uh, several years ago, um, the price was much less than it's going to be uh, when we really get into these projects. So we're going to have to, and we already are, looking for additional resources. And that could mean on the ferry side, um, asking some of our community partners to help subsidize that differential, uh, in addition to looking for other grants to help address these funding shortfalls. Here we are, as of today, we've talked about the projected revenue for fiscal year 23, we're looking at 26.6 million. Um, as of today, we uh, kept the budget flat with uh, FY22. And it's telling us that we need to focus on a differential of $3.6 million. Now we have um, priorities. Uh, recruitment and retention. Um, we must consider the department requests because they're the ones that are out there providing the services to ensure they have what they need, but also reviewing the requests to make sure that they are justifiable. Uh, we have uh, strategic initiatives 
that's going to help us with reducing uh, that 3.6 million differential. Um, the efficiencies that comes with reorganization, um, uh, getting the transit master plan uh, completed wherein it will guide us financially uh, in the future. Uh, and the budget would be centered around the plan that the board has adopted and um, uh, revenue sources applied uh, to those components of the plan. Uh, we have initiatives such as first mile, last mile. Uh, we are looking at internal CDL training so that we can get drivers trained quickly uh, and out uh, running the routes uh, so that we can fill a lot of these vacants, vacancies. We are looking at support uh, transportation services uh, and then new uh, or revived uh, revenue strategies, reassessing the value of advertising uh, opportunities. Uh, we know that we must prepare for premium increases, but also looking at strategies that we can implement to offset those increases. If we do better with the wellness program, if we have a strong safety program where we can document that we are avoiding risk, all of these strategies is going to help to close the gap of this $3.6 million. And some of these strategies uh, are already in place. Our balancing strategies, some of them include uh, right size in the organization, identifying duplications, uh, staffing reassignments, and promoting, of course, operating efficiencies. Uh, when I talk about staffing reassignments, it comes with the uh, reorganizations, uh, right fitting the right people in the right assignments. Um, a possibility as a balancing strategy could be a hiring freeze on non-essential positions, uh, looking at travel training and really focusing on those areas of travel training and staff development that, that's really beneficial to the organization and adds value to the organization. And even the, the incorporation of a a, a vacancy rate. So we are already identifying these strategies um, and efficiencies to address the 3.6 million shortfall. Next slide, please. Um, this is a representation of the millage rate history. Um, as you can see from 2018, uh, through the proposed FY23, the millage rate has remained at 1.5 mil, 1.15 mils. Our sources of revenue, of course, from the transit tax, the penny tax, it comes from grants. Uh, paratransit is funded 100% by Chatham County. Uh, passenger fares, and, and then revenues that uh, we receive from um, community agencies. Expenditure challenges, employee pay and benefits, gasoline price hikes, retention and recruitment, and of course, uh, the capital funding uh, shortfalls. Our capital budget, of course, our funding assistance sources comes from the FTA and Federal Highway and other state uh, uh, grant opportunities, uh, local match opportunities, uh, SPLOS, um, and from other stakeholder agencies. Internal budget development for capital um, managers and directors, particularly from the um, 
transportation side of things, that's where most of the capital dollars um, are needed for bus replacements. And all of the capital needs are discussed through the Transit Asset, Asset Management Committee that meets monthly to identify current and future uh, capital needs along with current and future grant funding opportunities. Uh, when it comes to capital, it's prioritized based on need and of course, contingent upon funding availability. Our grant funding status for FY23, a breakdown of the 4.8 million. We have ARP funding. Uh, we have 5310 funding. We also have uh, 5307 funding, and that provides operating assistance and preventive maintenance for FY23. Our capital funding needs. We have 14 buses that need to be replaced in FY23. Um, because of the increases in the unit costs per bus, um, that's what poses the funding shortfall. Uh, we currently have a um, purchase order in for the procurement of 23 paratransit buses. That's because that's all of the funding that we have to support that procurement. That's why you see 11 paratransit vehicles on this list for FY23. In the FY22 budget, um, it was identified that we needed to procure 34 paratransit buses. So we will be looking for additional funding to help us to meet the equipment needs that are scheduled for FY23. At this time, we'd like to uh, hear the board's feedback uh, on, on what has been presented to you this morning and open for any questions that you may have regarding the budget process and or where we are today. There are any questions? Yes, ma'am. This is uh this is Director Leggett. Okay. Hey, um, I just uh I know she was speaking about the buses that we have in this new budget. Uh are we still going to stagger how the buses are, are rolled out or do we have the money set aside to um, to bring the buses in? Are you speaking of the electric buses? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, so, so as the old buses uh, go offline, we bring in the new buses and stagger them in like that? Yes, that's, that's typically the plan. Right now we have uh, six electric buses already here. Um, staff is, is going through another round of training mm -hmm. um, and those buses will be rolled out relatively soon. Um, as we procure uh, additional vehicles as replacements, uh, mm -hmm. those buses will be staggered as they come in uh, and rolled out into the fleet as well. So within the budget also, uh, I don't think I heard, uh, are we going to have charging stations uh, in different places within our budget? Yes, with, within the uh, FY23 budget, we are going to move forward with uh, the charging station over at the ITC. We already have executed uh, grant funds to cover that cost. And as we increase our fleet, uh, with electric buses, that's going to be a part of, of, of that program as well to uh, have 
uh, charging stations uh, throughout the county to support electric bus. Thank you. That's all I had. Thank you, Ms. Cutter. You're welcome. Ms. Cutter? Yes, sir. Bobby Lockett, how are you today? I'm well, thank you. In your proposal, you mentioned uh, the fact that we will be using Uber, a contract for Uber. Tell me a little about that. Um, I let uh, uh, CEO DeMassimo speak to that. That's something that uh, CAT has been looking at for some time, um, but there were some concerns attached to it and she's working diligently with legal to try to work through some of those issues. Um, so I, I'd ask her to speak to where we are with that. And Director Lockett, I'm sorry, I didn't hear all of your question. I think based upon Ms. Cutter's response, are you referring to the Uber first mile, last mile? No, the, no, the contract. She mentioned it, that was the contract mentioned in that. Now, what was that? Was so, that one of the things that we, our insurance carrier had really um, balked a bit at the, the contract that we had proposed to engage in those kinds of services. They didn't feel like the appropriate uh, risk management provisions were considered in there and that the protections for us, the exposure and liability and so forth, especially in the transfer of passengers from one to the other was adequately covered. So we uh, reached out to some peer that uh, uh, transit properties that are already doing this kind of service yes. and had um, really good, we, we actually got some of their contracts, made sure our council looked at that, uh, reviewed them with our insurance carrier, and we're getting much closer to an agreement that the insurance can cover that we're well protected and that gets the service provided. So we're still a, a little bit apart on it, but we're getting much closer and we're certainly much closer in resolving the initial matters of concern that prevented us from even moving forward. So I, th I think we'll have good news on that front within the next month or two. Good explanation, thank you. Sure, thank you, sir. Anyone else? Are there, is there any feedback in terms of uh, the concerns that the board may have had or expansion efforts um, that we did not address uh, in, the, in the slides? Because we really, um, desire to pay attention and incorporate um, the ideas of the policymakers. Um, so your feedback is, is, is very, very important. When we bring back a balanced budget, um, we want to make sure that we have addressed um, those services uh, and programs that are important uh, to the board as our policymaker. So please feel free to share uh, your comments so we can make sure that we are properly addressing uh, those goals that the, the board has set for the organization. Hey, hey Ms. Cutter, this is Clinton. Um, I've got a couple, uh, I wouldn't say questions, but maybe if you could incorporate this into some of the presentations coming up next. Um, just, uh, and again, these are things that you probably already heard me say <laughs> in meetings before, um, but I am interested in learning more about uh, budget for communications and marketing, um, making sure that we are, we have, uh, there really is no doubt in anybody's mind at any time that we could communicate effectively with all of our riders, and that is never really um, a problem or a concern. Um, I think that's uh, given the rest of the budget and how, you know, how huge some of these numbers are, I would imagine it wouldn't need to be too much of a crazy number, um, but making sure that our writers know what's going on, what changes are happening. Um, I think we should not be concerned that we're spending what we're spending there. Um, the other one, and, and sorry if I came in late, um, 
tried to get up to speed a little bit early. The um, the transit master plan, and maybe I'm using the wrong language on that, but the plan that you've um, that we've been told about uh, redeveloping or reimagining some of the um, some of the routes is that included in this budget, or is that sort of a separate line item? We are, um, that's really not impacting the FY23 budget simply because we are seeking grant funding to cover 80% and we have local partners um, that are assisting with the local share. Now the board um, has uh, approved the our share and that will come out of FY22 monies. Mm -hmm. um, the board, remember, um, within the planning division, um, there was money already budgeted for such efforts, planning efforts. So we plan to utilize savings, um, savings and uh, budgeted uh, dollars to fund our $20,000 of, of our share of the uh, community-wide uh, master transit uh, plan. And also, Director Edminster, I, I wanted to assure you that the reorganization has addressed um, the communications piece to make sure the public is always informed as to what's going on uh, with routes and scheduling, what CAT is doing. Um, and, and I think the board as a whole Will, is going to be very pleased with um, that component of the reorganization and other components of the reorganization. I think I would Great. add to that as well, not just on the communication side, but the marketing side that you mentioned as well, Director Edminster. Um, we, we are working closely with the comms uh, team um, and have are really doing a significant refresh on marketing efforts to do some really creative and innovative things, some um, inspiring kinds of things with marketing. So uh, stay tuned for um, how we will move that forward. Got it. Thank you. Um, if uh, As I sort of think about this and digest the rest of the um, budget, I will um, email, you know, the team and let you guys know if I've got any questions and stuff. But thank you again. Thank you. Ms. Cutter, I think my, my only thing is this is direct to leg it. Uh, I just wanted to make sure with the uh, budget moving forward that we just, as money's come in, we hit our marks mm -hmm. and uh, anything that we can't get to in our budget cycle, then I guess we address it as it comes. But I just want to make sure that whatever we put there, that we uh, have the monies in place as it come in so that we can stay on, on target. So we want everything else that we're pushing out and all the new stuff that we're thinking about pushing out and as we explore moving transit west, you know, we'll be we'll be ready when that time comes. I just want to make sure that everything lines up and we support you guys with everything you need. Thank you, D Director Leggett. Um, um, that is the path that we're we're on. Uh, we we do realize if we don't have the money, we can't spend it. Um, we realize the value of prioritizing um, and, and moving forward, uh, and we will be keeping the board informed every step of the way. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm all good. Thank you. Okay, if there are no, that's all I have. Um, but please feel free um, to send any additional comments um, and or questions. Um, we're excited about this process. Um, we're integrating uh, MUNIS into the process, uh, wherein it will help us in terms of, of monitoring and keeping the department managers informed and and holding up the stop sign if someone is going too far. And um, so we're excited. 
Well, I appreciate the transparency here for the board as one board member. And I think it's good that we're going to continue to do this. So I see that you have another uh, financial workshop scheduled for May the 12th. And I think this is really good. We can closely monitor what, what our funds look like as we go forward. So, um, Mr. Massimo, is there anything else that we need to present? No, one of the things though, just to be a, a, a sort of leave on an aspirational or a, a, the visionary note, when we mentioned at the beginning of this presentation that we're really trying to set the foundation in the FY23 budget for FY24 really moving forward in the performance measurement space, you know, the goal we would have is that um, as we get into FY24, um, and we, we, one of the things in the reorganization is a, a stronger dedication or commitment to IT uh, capabilities within our, our ranks is that we would build out a dashboard that would be available not only to all the board members, but would be available to the public on an ongoing basis to be able to uh, keep, keep a, a, an, an eye always on our performance across a variety of metrics that we will agree to. Um, it's, it's an important part of the transparency, uh, Director Stone, that you just mentioned, but it's also a, it's an important part of building confidence. It's an important part of, of the kind of tracking and monitoring that's expected when you have the public's trust and confidence in your hands and so, and, and so forth. So um, that's ultimately where our, our goal will be is, is with a performance dashboard that can, that can really be utilized in the broadest of ways to um, engage everyone in, in how well we're doing. So um, just wanted to kind of throw that out there. I know it's a little bit beyond this budget, but um, that's that's our direction and I believe it's it's the right one. So I appreciate all your support in these important foundational steps we're taking to get there. Thank you. All right, is there any other business that we need to attend to today? If not, um, I don't know that we need a motion to adjourn, but I'll accept one. <laughs> Then I give one. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for being here. Um, all in favor of adjourning? Move to adjourn. Or uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Thank you all so much, and I uh, look forward to our next meeting in May. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.